Hi, I'm Dr. Ben Newman. I study coronaviruses for a living and read a lot of papers uh, because of that. So let's try and answer your questions uh, with stuff from some of those papers. All right. Next question is from Kat. And uh, yeah, hello. Hello. Welcome back. Uh, and happy birthday. Uh, yeah. To myself and Nicola. Thank you very much. Yeah. I've had mine. Nicola's got hers coming up. Um, let's see. I have a question. That's actually from my mom. She most likely had COVID from community spread in Texas back in early March. Okay. And it lasted about a month. That's rough. Um, yeah. Uh, it sounds like she made it through, and I'm glad. I'm glad for that. So now she's having an odd si uh, symptom. Her issue is that her submandibular gland ah, keeps swelling when she eats and almost immediately goes down again once she stops eating. Yeah, okay, maybe. Um, doctors have been ruling out the usual things like stones and infections so far, but she's read that the salivary glands are infected sometimes, uh, affected or infected, yeah, sometimes, during COVID-19 and are part of the mechanism for repeated loss, reported loss of taste. I don't think they're part of the loss of taste. Um, that's usually because taste is usually con driven by smell and the virus gets into these um, uh, smell receptor cells up in the top of your nose. That's the best explanation I've had for the loss of smell and taste one. Taste is overrated, basically. <laughs> um, uh, let's see. Um, but uh, also heard that they can maybe get plugged up by scar tissue from the virus. Maybe, but I don't think they would just start um, swelling when she eats if that was... Although, yeah, although they could. That would be... That would totally, yeah, explain it too. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so the question is, have you come across anything about this in... Well, it's not my research. It's stuff I've read. But, uh, yeah, sure. The answer is yes. Um... It goes back to original SARS. Uh, when they were looking in monkeys, there's a fairly famous paper where they show that it is in the, um, yeah, the salivary glands of these uh, non-human primates. And uh, some of the cells that are lining, like uh, the epithelium, like the cells that are lining the inside of the salivary gland, if you like, um, did seem to be susceptible to SARS coronavirus 1. And we know that SARS coronavirus 2 can get into the same cells as SARS CoV 1. So, most likely, yes, they should be susceptible. There are not as many reports from SARS 2, but that could be behind some of the positive saliva tests that um, we've heard about. And so, this was actually proposed as the entry, like the gateway for how the virus gets into the. Um, upper respiratory system in uh, SARS-CoV-1 in this particular animal model, which is possible, yeah. This is uh, interesting. It does sound like there's maybe a blockage there because uh, they would only start working when you are eating. Um, and uh, yeah, if there is a blockage, then they would start to swell up. And that could be something like um, a bit of scar tissue left behind or a bit of damage. I guess it wouldn't necessarily have to be from SARS-CoV-2. It could be from something else, but uh, yeah, that's interesting. And if it's really small, I don't know that they would pick it up with um, any of the standard tests that they would run. That sounds uh, painful and annoying and uh, potentially, yeah, potentially virus-related or um, uh, at least uh, infection-related in some way, yeah. So um, beyond being able to say that, yeah, I think you're reading the same things I'm reading, and I think, yeah, you're on what could be the right track. Um, it's a thing that could be figured out with enough testing, but might be invasive and annoying enough that you would just um, uh, try to hope that it goes away. I am not sure what could be done for treatment there. I don't know if there are any drugs that um, kind of dampen saliva, yeah, or like paralyze the salivary gland. An actual medical doctor would know something about that. Um, yeah, that is probably the next step. And um, I guess if the ones, that, well, the, yeah, if the ones that you're talking to can't uh, help or can't figure it out, you may want to go... Um, uh, seek a second opinion is all I can think, but I'm saying this is a non uh, non medical doctor myself. That's 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 all I could do in that situation uh, to try and figure it out. 
very interesting. Very curious to know if uh, it does turn out to be uh, SARS-CoV-2 because I have not seen many reports that actually uh, looked at that site. Mostly we've been uh, concentrating on the upper respiratory tract and the nose and the intestines. Yeah. And uh, yeah, a little bit more information on what the virus is doing would help to explain maybe some more of the uh, diseases that are associated with it. So thanks very much. Very interesting. And uh, yeah, I wish your mother the best. I hope she's uh, uh, doing all right. Thanks very much. This is Ask Dr. Ben.